Actually, last night, soundbite, Ashley just reminded me of it again this morning. She said, you're going on the podcast. Just remind him to say, uh, we're putting Battleborn up in this bitch. (laughs) (laughs) I'm Dennis Ferris, and this is the Limitless Energy Podcast. We are here in Tampa at the RV Super Show, and I'd like to welcome my guest today, Chris Barth, one of the founders and vice president at Ember RV. Thanks for having me. So, what exactly do you do at Ember RV? Uh, Our company uh, um, um, is new, so everybody is in kind of a multi-hat role. Um, I am... uh, um, officially the vice president and COO, but I really prefer to you talk about the it toilets too. I do also, I have, but I, I've, uh, I really prefer more of a discussion of, uh, of lead product developer and, and, and co-founder. Um, um, one of the most exciting parts about the role was, uh, getting to be there from the very, very ground up and shaping things. So that, that's, that's the fun part. So you guys are newcomers to the industry, I guess sure. you can be characterized as that. So it's, it's pretty cool to have one of the founders on the show today, um, Talk about the founding of the company. Well, so new company, but uh, um, I'll say old, old, or old, old, not old, that's the bad way to say it, experienced folks um, that are um, our partners. So uh, I've been in the industry since 1996 um, and largely doing product development in one way, shape, or form. Um, and my other founders, um, Ashley, uh, Ashley, when we started, was, what, 11 years in, um, and she is the granddaughter of uh, the folks who uh, started Jayco. So um, right. her family has been doing that forever. Um, her grandfather and grandmother uh, um, founded that company in 1968, and uh, it sold out uh, to Thor, and um, she then moved on to a different uh, kind of role um, and still wanted to lead, though. Still had an idea about kind of family legacy. And um, myself and a couple of others um, um, kind of, discuss this idea of what we wanted to do together maybe some new spaces that weren't being touched so um it was a discussion of uh, if there's an area um that we could kind of address for people who were looking for something different kind of post pandemic um it was um what if i don't want to camp in a campground um how would i do that and some of that discussion was a uh, um uh, about looking at what kind of what kind of uses that people have rvia um RVIA did a a, a giant 120-page study about um, kind of different different types of RVers. They identified seven types of RVers, and we said, like, what if we could get three or four different types um, in in a segment? And then we also said if we build the same thing that everybody does, um, that's not going to go over so so well. Um, Let's do something better. So the concept of let's build a better RV um, with my founders, and the other two founders are uh, Steve... Uh, Delagrange, uh, an operations uh, um, um, expert, uh, guru, um, somebody who's been in the industry for almost 30 years, and then uh, Ernie Miller, um, about 20 years of experience in, and two of the most popular ops guys um, in the industry, um, but just have teams of people that want to work with them. So we all said, what if we could build a better RV? What do we do with that? And then it, then it became a discussion actually about what if what if we could build a better RV company? Mm-hmm. And building the company out then became really, really cool versus just building the coaches themselves. So is it is it daunting building something completely new in a mature industry, or were you like focused? You knew exa- exactly these are the needs, and we're going to address those. I, I think I think daunting is a great way to talk about it. We also started in 2021, so there's a lot of other strange challenges going on there with uh, um, supply chain and procurement. Um, I yeah I heard about that. Yeah, you did you hear about that? Yeah. It's it's a, uh, raw materials were uh, strange, <laughs> and there was. Every other every other week there would be something else that was a weird thing that would happen. So you just had to start accepting things. Someone parked a canal or boat in a canal wrong, or um, you know, just weird stuff. I remember it was very strange. Uh, so um, that actually helped to shape some of what we did, um, um, just because of even availability of certain parts. We started looking at certain premium materials and tried to go more domestic. Um, that was a really important thing to us to domestically source. But yeah, it was daunting. Uh, there was a challenge. The marketplace um, was saturated with certain types of product as well. We saw a huge opportunity in the Overland space. Um, Overland, uh, for those who don't know, is kind of best maybe defined by people who are more focused on um, the voyage rather than just the destination. Like they love, well, it's, the, it's kind, of, kind of like the Great American Road Trip crossed with the uh, 
um, uh, Jeep backpack mentality. And um, I really think that there's a lot of people who are doing Overland um, stuff. Um, uh, A lot of different people are doing it, but not in the RV space, really. So you're pretty unique in your focus, at least in the mainstream RV space. Mainstream RV space, we said, if this is conventional, let's go conventional plus. Um, And if the conventional space is more maybe what we call traditional RV, let's go a little bit more um, um, unconventional, non-traditional. And what we saw there was the idea of if campgrounds are full of traditional RVs and traditional RVers, what if we don't need a campground? How do we get how do we get off grid and off road? So it is funny that the the uh, conditions that led to you know the difficulties in supply chain and all that also led to more people wanting to go out in RV. So at mm-hmm. a time when RVs were selling and booming, and the infrastructure was not, folks were like, all right, we need to get out and not plug in, and that's what you were addressing. I think it was this idea of. Um, you know, post-pandemic uh, mentality, even even in the pandemic, people are like, you can't take my vacation away from me, right? Um, I'm not going to go to uh, maybe a theme park or I'm not going to go to a hotel. Maybe I'm not on an airplane or a cruise ship or all those things. RV became super, super popular, a great way to uh, spend time with the family, as by the way, it always was, but it really put an emphasis on it. Well, I think it was like, well, I'm not even going to work. Yeah. I'm going to work in the RV yep. instead. And, so. and, we ha- and we had a lot of people asking then for, I need I need flexible space. Um, uh, my, my RV has to be multiple things. It can't just be a bunkhouse or it can't just be like a couple style coach. So that flavored our design as well. I mean, we have multiple floor plan configurations that convert quite a bit now. So the off-road part was an interesting thing. We had to work with um, with our friends at Lippert and, and their Kurt group to develop an off-road suspension. Um, so that's a trailing arm, heavy-duty coil spring, dual shock, truly independent suspension. And that, that covered the whole idea of let's get off-road. That's a uh, specialty um, uh, frame, and um, there's all sorts of goodies to dig into there. But the other part of this was how do we get off-grid? And off-grid was... I'm going to need big water, so 55 gallons of fresh water, as for instance, and ta-da, I need batteries, right? And I need power. How do I do that, and how do I do it effectively? Solar, um, a lot of folks in RV started understanding maybe even a few years ago, but they just addressed it by throwing panels on top and then saying, um, you're solar prepped or you're solar ready. Yep, great, but that's just gas pump, and that's not gas tank. Right, um, you know, we address all of that issue all the time. Yeah. Like I've got two kilowatts of solar why is this not working yeah. right well the sun only shines in the daytime so. yeah and we've told people bigger batteries is the right way to go not more panels necessarily um, um because once you get charged up right um you're able to do so many different things so that was kind of key early early in the development stages uh we ran into some uh, some friends um uh, Wade and Josh uh, came and talked to us a, a lot about um, from from uh, they're friends of mine from, too yeah from from your company um, <laughs> um, came and talked to us about different things we could do um, even dropped off some uh, some kind of um, battery boxes you know, to give us some sizing ideas and mm-hmm. we actually um, this is gonna sound fun to you uh, we designed the product actually around some of those spaces to make sure we could we could actually integrate it in and we even kind of looked at what is going to come for the future and uh, built it out so the larger battery the game changer could fit in there too. We also um, loved the Battleborn name already because um, that was something that was coming from consumer requests when we went out online and take, took a look at what people were talking about. That was really the only brand name um, battery that came up um, with frequency. So by the time Wade and Josh had spoken to you, you already knew the brand. I did. I'd already heard. I'd already heard of it from the marketplace, and I knew that. I knew that Dragonfly. I mean, I knew that name as well from from other stuff. But um, the Battleborn was the kind of that that name that was out there on the lips of consumers already. And uh, you're supposed to give consumers what they want, right? You're supposed to like try to we do try. That. We try. Yeah. So this was a really cool thing to be able to say, hey, we have this um, this cool battery system. I mean, I think I told you guys before that um, the very first time I mean, we're in a fairly empty facility getting brand new um, shipments in and this pallet of batteries shows up. And um, Ashley um, looked at me because it was a, it was a fairly expensive, uh, you know, the batteries are not, they're not cheap. Um, they do something very special for us and a giant pallet of them. Um, she was like, Hey, what's, what is this all about? Uh, Cause we, again, we're stocking up. And I said, I said, this is, this is how we're going to go. This is going to be really cool. She's like, you better sell them, you know? <laughs> and it turns out um, we grossly underestimated um, the, uh, 
the demand, which was a really interesting thing that happened. We really thought at the beginning it might have been more of a 15 20% take rate kind of thing. Um, dealers um, needed to maybe, uh, RV dealers needed to know a little bit more about it. Um, we still needed to kind of learn how that system would work better. But we planned for it. We knew there would be demand. Um, the demand shifted into an almost 50% out of the gates kind of thing and now hovers around that 75 80 um i've had days though that the full production line is just full of solar panels and battleborn batteries on every single coach given what you just discussed how is it that anyone doesn't opt for for the system well so that's that's that is the thing now so um if we look at if we look at inventory that that dealers have the the units that are powered up, the ones that are ready to go, which by the way, what's cool is like at a dealership location, when we ship that that way, it's dry camping at the dealership, Mm -hmm. you know, and somebody can go in and turn everything on and try things out because it's, it's ready to go. We've, we've hidden the batteries uh, nicely to kind of integrate them into the coach. So it's something that um, if the dealer knows it's there, they flip everything on. And again, we're dry camping at the dealership. It has been a thing where we've watched consumers kind of pick off that inventory first. Mm-hmm. They go after that, which makes sense. Um, so the dealers it, are, are, are dictating that <clears throat> spread of... Yeah, it was us and them both. Mm-hmm. At, at first, it was just a, hey, what do we think the um, what do we think the take rate's going to be or how is it going to work? And then slowly but surely... And some dealers, by the way, were really, really in tune with this and said, I'm going to take them all this way. Um, other ones were, let's, let's see how it goes. And, and uh, what we learned is... Uh, um, our consumers see the value in um, a more robust system to get them off grid. Um, so while I can say it's expensive, um, that's almost an old um, mentality on it. I used to work with an electrical engineer at another manufacturer who used to tell me all the time that solar is, you know, solar energy, you're never going to get your money out of the investment, right? Never going to never gonna get the return on that. And I, and I would say, um, so you're saying it's a bad investment? He said, yeah. I said, well, so is an RV. <laughs> right and this is a I, I i know i build rvs all day long we don't buy rvs because it's an investment we buy rvs because they let us do something that we couldn't do otherwise and um it's one of my favorite things about it actually is uh the experiences that you're able to have which are so unique and different this makes it even more unique and different who needs a campground i love campgrounds um i like state and national parks too but state and national parks many times have more rustic areas um some of the best areas in fact are more rustic and uh um, there's lots and lots of land in the United States and Canada that you can just, uh, again, if you know somebody who has land up north or whatever, you can get off the, off the grid pretty quickly and have fantastic time. These batteries, this water, extra propane, all these things help you to do those things. And if with some planning, um, you can stretch it out for weeks. Um, I came back from my spring break trip with my kids. I'm actually, I'm, I own uh, an Ember 190 MDB which is a no slide bunkhouse model, double over double. I have twin 15 year old daughters, um, Zoe and Evelyn. I'll just say that because uh, they'll listen to this because they're a geek like their dad. Um, they, uh, we came back from a spring break trip and um, I decided I'd just put my coach out in the driveway to see how long it would go. Cause I just wanted to see me using it in the real, how I would use it. And I had a little mini fridge going, which was probably the biggest power consumer. We have a 12 volt fridge in there that actually really works well. Um, after the fifth week in my driveway, um, we were going on another trip. Um, after the fifth week, um, I was like, okay, I'm satisfied that in April weather in Indiana, which was, by the way, all four seasons at once, uh, um, you know, we had a dusting of snow and we had a really hot day. I was in partial sun sometimes because of a, a tree uh, shade that would fall over the panels. Um, um, I think the lowest I ever got on the batteries was uh, like 78%. Um, so I was really excited to think about this idea of... Um, conceptually perpetual camping if i didn't throw on the air conditioning or or um or the microwave which are the only two items in our coaches which are 120 volt um users really other other than again that mini fridge on on that on that specific model so if i can go back a second yeah i can conclude that you are in an rv you're an rv manufacturer that owns an rv yeah it's RV. it's um it's one of those funny things uh i i think there's an assumption that of course everyone in the RV industry camps and of course everyone uses their products. And I think there's a dirty little secret in the RV industry that like most of it's designed by 30 to 40 year old males who don't camp. And we hear about that from consumers all the time. I'm just repeating what I've been told by consumers. They're, they question this, like, has anyone ever used this thing? And, and it's a, 
it's a rough thing sometimes because it can be e- even really little things like a bathroom, uh, a toilet position in a, in a t- crowded bathroom can make you say it's obvious that the person who designed this never had to use a bathroom in an RV. The dirty business of doing RVing is one of those things where if we can do that better, man, does that have a big, a big impact on people? Or, you know, where does the light switch go? Or how many USB ports does something have uh, uh, in it? So there's all these little things like that. Um, using the coach, um, which Ashley owns, uh, Ashley owns one as well. So does Steve. So does Ernie. Everybody camps, right? Um, we also, when we get done with our prototypes, we've made them available to our to our team for an experience as an experiential fleet. So now we have guys who have been building RVs for 20 or 30 years in, in Elkhart County, Indiana. That's where we're based. We're based in Bristol. Um, we've had people who uh, had never camped before in an RV. And we, they've been able to take out an ember and, and have a, 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 their first experience. And the only thing we require from them is uh, for them to tell us uh, what did you like, what didn't you like, what would you change, how would you make it better. Better is a big phrase for our company is what can we do better. Um, it's actually part of our company philosophy. So I would think it's an asset to have the lead product designer actually go RVing yeah. frequently and understand the pain points and try to solve them. It's super fun to like go on a trip. Like we, uh, we went out to one of the Overland Expos, uh, Overland Expo East. We went there with, uh, two, two of, um, uh, my engineers, uh, um, came out there with us. I had one of my prototype engineers, um, all of us camping together, especially camping and prototype stuff, um, and trying different things out. Um, I mean, there's some stuff that we had on those coaches that still isn't in the marketplace yet. And, it's fun to try those things out. Um, that that's the true R and D is, uh, how does it work in use? But it also is, um, um, fun because of, of that crew is enthusiastic about building the next thing. And so, um, a couple of those young engineers that are, that are, that are with us that got to see their stuff, um, in use. It's awesome to see like a customer seeing photos come in. It's another thing altogether to use it yourself. And, uh, and kind of prove the whole thing out. Oh my gosh, this really works well. And then people come by and say, this is really cool what you did. And uh, um, we have a modularized kind of bunk system that we're showing off on a, on a coach here uh, um, for the first time in a, in a big tandem, uh, tandem uh, independent suspension setup uh, called the 221 MSL. And the back has got this kind of a um, very cool, it can be a bunk room, it can be a, um, an adult bed, it can be a desktop, it could be storage space. So it's about flexibility. Mm-hmm. Um, all of these different items in the coach that allow us to be more flexible are the things that I think of that um, maybe make uh, the, the brand uh, and the product stronger. Um, um, flexibility, flexibility in that power system for us um, um, allowed us to do the off-grid thing in a way that I, I feel like um, did change the game right um so that's why i think the battery name is so fun and we're, we're still trying to work on some um i think better kind of ways to tell people that we've got that uh that game changer on board and make sure they understand that um in in my experience now uh, over the last uh, year kind of having these units live in the marketplace questions that frequently come up are about what they can do with the battery system they frequently want to run the air conditioning system and we have to have a talk with them about what's real there, manage the customer's expectations. We usually say, you know, about a hundred amp hours um, of battery will maybe buy you an hour on, on the air, air conditioner, but that's a, um, a, your results may vary discussion, mm-hmm. right? Well, that's, I mean, that's a good rule of thumb that we like to tell people as yeah. well about a kilowatt hour for an, for an hour of, uh, air conditioner usage. But, um, do you uh, find yourself designing around how long you want your customers to be able to run the air conditioner? And- we we've tried we've actually tried not to do that because it's 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 such a limitation still. We use a um, um, a Truma air conditioner uh, unit, the Truma Aventa, which is a really um, much better power consumer. Like it does a great job, um, but it's still a discussion with most most folks, especially kind of the more maybe battery minded ones, the ones who like know how it works that um, let's get good airflow going. We're going to maybe blast the air conditioner for, <clears throat> maybe we'll blast it for a second. Uh, we have it on for an hour, cool down the coach or half an hour cooling down the coach. I mean, our coaches are relatively small, so you can cool them off pretty quick. Then we have big European windows in there that can vent and, and uh, um, pair that up with the specialty fans and things like that. And you can really do better um, in getting it cooled off and, and good to go. Um, Again, I think there's there's lots and lots of room for people to have um, more uh, more in depth conversations about what they really want the systems to do. We're trying to listen about hey, what do you want to do? The air conditioning thing just comes up. 
um, you know, we have somebody who like calls in and says, uh, you know, they're in, they're in, um, uh, the person was in Louisiana, uh, 101 degree real temp, um, crazy high humidity and had, uh, he had uh, 200 amp hours of battery and said that, that the, he had the air conditioner on blast for two hours or hour and a half. And then, it, and then it petered out and he was upset. I he, he said, I had only lasted an hour and a half. I was like, that is awesome. <laughs> you know? And he was like, no, uh, you know, I wanted eight hours. I said, I, we, well, we can buy you some more batteries. You know, that's the whole, that's the whole thing is, uh, um, I, I frequently talk with customers about that gas, uh, gas pump, uh, solar power, but gas tank. You need, you can add more gas to the tank and new battery tech is always coming. Um, one of the very exciting things I know from your company is you guys have like new stuff on the way all the time. Um, I know that you're working on special projects that will make that so that we can go further. Um, but it's, 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 we have to have the time to do it. And, um, and then it's just, uh, um, the resources as well. Um, customers do understand that you have to spend, uh, to get to that spot. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's almost limitless. I mean, you could, um, we have, we have, uh, cargo carrying capacity issues that you'd get into where you'd, if you loaded the whole thing full of batteries, but it's potentially something someone could do. And I know in the bigger rigs that they do it, right. Um, you get into a fifth wheel build and you can, oh my goodness. Uh, if you've got 3000 pounds of cargo carrying capacity, why not take up a couple hundred pounds of batteries? Right. I think you'd be okay with that, right? I would be okay with that. You know, do, do what you need to do to get more batteries out there, and we'll, we're going to help. Yeah. So. We, we've been doing a good job. Uh, it's, uh, a funny story happened to us last year when we were at this show. Um, they didn't power us up. Uh, they, um, there was a, some sort of mix-up. Um, our whole row didn't have power. And um, um, because we had Battleborns in, we had it in only three coaches at the time. Every single one of the Overlands this year has a Battleborn in it because of what we learned last year. We had it in three coaches. We daisy-chained them together power to hold display and the dealer the dealer plugged in their uh, their printers and their computers our whole area our whole area for three days um had power but it was only it was only run on battleborns so it was kind of a cool thing you're welcome <laughs> on that note uh thank you so much for coming by chris mm -hmm. and uh, we appreciate your time today it was a pleasure being here that's going to do it for today i'd like to thank my guest chris barth co-founder and vice president of ember rv thank you chris be sure to subscribe on any of your favorite podcast platforms.